Hello guys, welcome back to this third video tutorial about Polydynamics. Uh, in our last video we spoke about how is it the Polydynamic equation actually coded in using a scientific code called Peridigm. We went into the website, we started looking into the material model, in particular we we saw the linear peridynamic elastic model, which is the most uh, common peridynamic model for the state-based type. And we started looking around how are the computed forces and uh, how is it the peridynamic equation in general understood from a scientific coding side. In this video tutorial now, I will talk to you about the main difference, and this is an important thing, because why is it that we have bond-based peridynamics and why is it that we have also state-based peridynamics? And what is the relationship in between? So I will try to be very, uh, as best as I can, to try to explain it to you and to see how this can be um, actually at the same time also from the perspective side of coding, actually seen. So let's start. Now, here is the presentation that I was showing you previously, and we ended up with this expression here, which is which is which the small f is usually associated with bond-based peridynamics, which was developed in the year 2000, and the capital T is as it is here, it is usually associated with the state-based peridynamics, which was developed 2007, seven years later. But this is interesting because actually the both of them can be related, in particularly when looking into the linear elasticity type. And this relation, it is this as, as it is expressed in here. And now I will guide you with the main difference of the bond-based and the state-based peridynamics, and why in this case we can say it is equal, in fact. Okay, so the bond-based peridynamics, as I was mentioning, it was developed in the year 2000, and here it is associated usually with the small f, yes? And the small f, what is this a small f? This is a force function, and this force function has one important parameter which is c and why is this important because c includes the bulk modulus k which is a material property of our solid of our interest all right and delta here which is in the denominator delta x elevated to the power of four this is the radius of the horizon yes which horizon are we talking about? Why? Well, this is the horizon of the particle x. That's why it has the subscript here x. All right. So this delta here. So which means that this parameter is put inside the, into this expression because this will mean that the force has in some way a relation which which this non-locality that is provided by this parameter or this uh, radius delta, yeah? And of course, it is intrinsically related with the bulk material. The parameter S, as I was mentioning, S is small letter and underlined, it's because it is acting upon a bond. This is called the bond stretch. And the bond stretch, it is defined as the bond extension, the magnitude of the bond extension, here are the magnitude uh, brackets minus the, the, which is the the magnitude of the bond current position y minus the bond core uh, original position x divided by the bond original position x which since we know that this we are containing a magnitude of a vector this will end up with a scalar and that's why we are defining here in in small letters the y the current deformation the original deformation and the original deformation the above it's called the bond extension and below is the and when it is divided by the reference bond position it will provide you a scalar which is called the stretch the bond stretch 
all right and as remember remember it this is bond stretch is the stretch of for instance uh, of the bond which is formed for instance by particles q and x this will only be one single bond so this is the bond the stretch of this particular bond so you will have stretches from all the bonds coming inside this horizon yeah okay so this is the small letter f which has one parameter k but what is the state based as i was uh, that we were mentioning in the previous slides right so this is defined by the capital letter t yes and the capital letter t bond force expression for a linear peridynamic solid uh, this is important because there are many material models one the most common uh, is uh, called for linear elasticity linear peridynamic solid and also in 3d three dimensions it's this one here which we can see immediately that we have two parameters which have the k which is the same bulk modulus as was also mentioned here in the bond base and we also have the mu parameter which is related to the shear coefficient this is the shear modulus and uh, this is also a, another material property of of our solid uh, that we are interested in modeling right so we have two parameters where, whereas here we had only one so this will intuitively intuitively tell us that okay the state-based peridynamic model is quite more uh, complex and will allow us to simulate different material models why because of these facts and this is actually very very related with classical linear elasticity in which you also have two parameters like the bulk modulus and the shear modulus right of course here we are speaking we have also the horizon which provides us the non-locality whereas in classical elasticity we don't have that so here our solutions will be non-local yes okay but what about the rest of the uh, the parameters that we are mentioning in here and this is also important because here we are introducing several more so like theta here it's a dilatation and notice here that the theta is is not underlined because it is actually acting upon a particle this is this is the dilatation of a specific point itself right um so how and how is this dilatation computed and we have also the m parameter which is also acting upon a particle itself when i say particles they are uh, when building this expression they will require bonds but they are only acting upon particles like which particle for instance in this case we are talking about particle x so it's the dilatation of this particle x or the weighted volume m that it's on this particle x as well okay so and how are these dilatation and this weighted volume built they are built as these other two integrals that we have here yes the dilatation is defined by 3 over the weighted volume and uh, here again we have the integral both in both cases over the horizon of our neighborhood which has the radius delta that we were mentioning before and here it is important because we have the parameter also we have we have here the the extension the bond extension which is being multiplied by the bond uh, original position x which was also seen here and here we also introduce another bond a parameter which is called omega and this omega this is just a weighted it is called a weighted function and what does it do it exactly does that it just weights what is how much each bond will have a will how what will be the the weight that we will be giving to each bond to form this parameter theta yes so this means if we are looking here we have the integral again in order to form the theta on x we will have omega for a particular weight that each of these bonds will have when building this uh, dilatation function in x yes 
and this will be built by multiplying the bond uh, original position times the bond extension uh, which was here okay okay so in a similar way the weighted volume it's also built as another integral or oh, again the omega here the weighted function the current position the original position i'm sorry times the original position times the, the volume so this means that we need to have two functions one for building theta then one for the building the weighted volume and then once we have these parameters and of course time with the material models mu and the bulk models modulus we will be able to compute the bond force yes whereas here we were we didn't need to we only needed to do one simple integral right and that's it because we didn't have to build uh, no theta no weighted volume we just needed to to straight cs and then build the force function and that's it yeah so here we have much more parameters and another important thing here to mention is that we have here the parameter the bond extension the deviatoric bond extension which is defined as e with the upper script t and this bond extension deviatoric bond extension it is defined as the bond extension here minus the effect of the volumetric part which is provided by this theta that we previously computed for this particular multiplied by this bond the uh, original position so this is sim something very similar to classical continuum mechanics in which we have the deviatoric strain which is the the normal strain minus the the volumetric part of the strain it will give us the deviatoric strain well we have something analogous here in peridynamics which is called the deviatoric bond but this is acting upon a bond okay so here this is the main important difference between bond based and state based peridynamics in which bond based as i was mentioning it has only one parameter k and here we have two parameters mu and k but this will if this will immediately tell us that okay the bond the state base will pro, will because of these two parameters will allow us to simulate a large material range whereas here we will be only be able to simulate materials with poisson ratio of one fourth which is a uh, small which is a very very it's just one particular uh, material parameter and this is and if we are speaking about three dimension solids okay so only one person rate but the price you have to pay to use the state based formulation is uh, it is more expensive in terms of computational resources because you need to compute more uh, more integrals more inner integrals such as here the the in order to build the volumetric theta or the weighted volume m yes before building actually the four state uh, and this is also why you have a uh, more flexibility in the state based peridynamics uh, in order to be able to simulate a larger range of materials because you have a collective uh, you are considering the collective deformation of all bonds and when i say the collective deformation of all bonds is that in order to build the bond a single bond force in here between the particles x and q you are requiring first to build the collective deformation the volumetric deformation of upon the particle x then you are also considering the weighted volume of all bonds to build on upon the particle x again and then having all this collective information you are able to build one particular bond force yes only one whereas in the bond based peridynamics you were only considering the deformation of this particular bond itself and that's it you were not 
your bond force was not dependent upon a collective deformation and that's why your the bond based material is more limited in terms of material range modeling it is faster because you have to obviously compute less integrals but it is but of course this you have to you pay the price and you are limited in the bond range in the range of materials that you are able to simulate okay and uh, this is a uh, very 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 important to differentiate between those but there is one important thing in which actually both material models can be correlated between each other and this is why we have this equal sign that i was mentioning here to you before and this comes in this important part yes like in here if you set the shear modulus to be um to, to have a poisson ratio of one fourth and this expression here you can actually see it in this is the shear modulus expressed in terms of the bulk modulus and the poisson ratio and you can see go you can know this expression from classical mechanics if you put uh, here for instance bulk modulus um and then you go here to wikipedia and then you go down to see how the bulk modulus you have here the expression how can you express the shear modulus for instance which is called here g instead of mu how can you express the shear modulus in terms of the bulk modulus and the poisson ratio and you have here the expression i'm going to put zoom a little bit bigger it is 3k 1 minus 2v divided by 2 1 plus v yes which is exactly this expression that we have here so if we were to express the poisson ratio as i was mentioning to you to one fourth and you substitute this into this expression you will end up with a mu expressed uh, reduced to this factor here three times the bulk modulus divided by five and now if you substitute um I'm putting this big again. If you substitute this into the peridynamic state based force T, which is the expression that we had uh, here, yes, you will end up uh, with this expression here. You will see, it, okay, this first this is the same. This has the bulk modulus, doesn't really matter. So here we are substituting into here, into this mu. And when substituting into this mu, you will end up with this denominator multiplied by omega which is here we are putting it outside and then uh, we have here ed and ed we know that it is defined as the bond extension minus theta x divided by 3 which is here e minus theta x over 3 so this is the bond uh, deviatoric extension and this is the substitution yeah and then if you develop this expression you will notice that if you multiply this times this this is exactly the same as this here because 9 divided by 3 it will give you 3 k theta x over m and which is omega here this is exactly the same as here so will you will be just only left with this single expression that is in between these two brackets yes 9k over m so we, you have here eliminated the 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 theta and you will just uh, finish with this bulk modulus here right and now now this is something interesting if you put if you set omega that means the influence function that uh, that each of, of our bonds will have to build the the bond force itself yeah you set it to one divided by the original bond position x yes you substitute this into here and then you evaluate m m is the weighted volume here yes this integral here in spherical coordinates 
and you have to change in order to you you make this this change here of omega and then you evaluate this in the spherical coordinates you need to change of coordinates this from rectangular this is currently rectangular coordinates you need to change them to spherical coordinates and this is something interesting that i will make uh, in another video how to do this because it's quite the use in useful and very use of course in the parade dynamics you can end up and after evaluating this integral with this parameter here which will be equal to p times delta to the, which is the radius times the uh, elevated to the fourth yeah so when making this substitution here you will eventually end up with multiply time you will see here the multiplying with the bond extension and then the the original bond position you will end up the, the same expression that was used in the bond based peridynamics yeah so why is this okay so e divided by x is s as was previously mentioned here e divided by x is s is the bond stretch and this expression between parentheses here it is the bond the bond the parameter that we used in the bond based which is here c but here was 18k divided by p delta 4 and here we have 9k divided by p delta 4 so this one here is half that here and this makes totally sense why why is this that uh, we obtained here half because we were mentioning before here that the f is the sum of these two four states right so that's why when you have a um you can you can express the capital t as the force divided by that is why it is two because this one contains this is the expression with 18 and this is expression with 9 so 9 times 9 you will end up with 18 so it is the same that's why it is half the value and this is the interesting thing how you can actually see that the ball both uh, theories the bond based and the state based peridynamics correlate and they are exactly the same to each other when you are uh, forcing the state based peridynamics to be to have a poisson ratio of one fourth and using these particular uh, expressions for the weighted volume and the the bond uh, weighted uh, function omega yeah so that's why the state based peridynamics can be can be um can derive can can end up with a bond based peridynamic expression when you are limiting it yeah so this is this is the the important thing that i wanted to show you in this part and now i would like to show you how this is actually seen from a coding perspective so let's do that again let's go here to our peridynamics uh, github yes as we previously saw and here if we go inside the source folder we go to the materials folder again and this time last time i remember i showed you the elastic type which is the state-based elastic uh, peridynamic model but now i want to show you the bond-based peridynamic and this is here elastic bond based cxx i will put this a little bit bigger yeah okay and then if you go here in the compute internal force linear elastic bond based you will see that you have here the expression um, you have a constant and uh, let's put this this uh, here you have a constant parameter here this which refers to this c in here multiplied times the stretch the stretch is the bond stretch exactly as we were defining previously like the current bond length 
minus the initial bond length divided by the initial bond length. This will give you the bond stretch. Yes, and this is a scalar quantity. And, but interestingly, what is this constant? And we, uh, how is this computed? So we can go here and we can see, oh, exactly here. This constant is a constant. That's why they are putting it there, putting it outside the both of the four loops. And this is multiplying 18 times the bulk modulus divided by P and delta, 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 which is exactly the expression that we were mentioning um, here. 18 times bulk modulus divided by P delta, 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 delta. Yes, but because we know that the bond base can be derived from the state-based peridynamic model and it should be here 9 instead of 18 we can go here to the down down here and then we can see that's why it is being multiplied by 0 0.5 which is multiplied by one half this will give you 9 instead of 18 as is as it is here 9k over p delta yes and then we know uh, what we saw last on our last video, how the bond force is acting upon this, uh, how it is being calculated from one side of the equation, then it is moving uh, some to the other, and this is this is exactly that we what we explained in my in a previous video. So and I, and this would be all that I would like to explain to you for this video. Um, I hope I was clear enough. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask, uh, contact me, uh, let me know also your comments, how is it, is this interesting to you, it, how do you find it, what would you like also else to see, uh, and so on, and uh, I will do that for you with uh, pleasure, and uh, I will try to be as clear as possible as I have always try been trying to be, all right? So... Uh, something something to take away from this part is that the both the bond based and the state based peridynamic models that I showed you this time were in the context of 3D. I received a message, actually interesting message, that what would happen for plain strain and plain stress models. And yeah, we will eventually get into this point. Uh, please be patient, um, and we will actually see them how they are being they can be coded into peridigum. And um, well, okay, I think this would be all from my side this time. Uh, please subscribe and give it a like if you did like this video, in, in fact, or not. And uh, see you next time. Have a wonderful time, and I hope I, you enjoyed it. Okay, see you.